Hello, I am Dexter Russo. Um, I am the owner of these boas that you keep seeing on my channel. Um, I'm just going to go over some basic things today that I think personally uh, beginners should know. Uh, basic things they're going to need. Um, different variations of beginner cages. To, I mean, this is still considered a beginner setup, but you know, basic things that I believe a boa keeper should have as far as what beginners need to know. So I'm going to try to help. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I'm not an expert. I've only been doing this two, three years now. Um, so I've done a lot of research and hopefully this encourages you to do research as well. Here we go. So I want to start with my least favorite setup. Um, this right here, I'm sure I'll get a lot of flack for this. Uh, this is a temporary setup for my guy, Bosk here. He is a double head for snow male. Um, this is a basic, basic setup. Uh, the only reason I don't like this setup is because open screen, which a lot of you know, um, the thing, tanks are controversial, honestly. Um, you have people from 30 years ago that tell you I've been doing tanks my whole career and all my animals are healthy, which they probably are. They probably are. Are there better setups nowadays? Yes. Can you raise a healthy animal in a tank? Yes. You just have to have the things that are necessary to do so. Um, Bosk here, I, I assure you, eats on a regular schedule. He sheds normally, no problems. Um, thankfully in Louisiana, we have pretty good humidity. I do spray his uh, substrate down. He does have eco earth. It's a little dry right now. I do need to spray. Um, this light is pointless. It is just for looks. Um, I like to light up his cage when I'm in the room. It's only on maybe 30 minutes to an hour a day, if that. Um, things you will need to make this work. There are people who will put foil to cover this up. I personally believe ventilation is not a bad thing, but we have good humidity here. As you can see, ambient temperature is around 75. You need one of these, first off. You need to be able to know what the humidity in your room is and your enclosures. I have several of these throughout, but you need to be able to know what the ambient temperature is and what your humidity is. You need a thermostat. This is probably the cheapest thermostat you can get. I don't like this thermostat. I can't control it, I can't dial it in how I would like to. And yet you can see that it says it's reading 100, but I assure you it is probably between 90 and 92 on the hotspot with my temp gun. But you will need a thermostat that goes to an under tank heater. You put your tank underneath, just like that. And then me personally, I really, really, really think if you're gonna use under tank heat, you need to have ventilation. You need to have that heat be able to escape. You can't have it trapped under here. Like some people will put these tanks on a wood table. You really need to have ventilation for that heat to escape. But this is a basic, basic tank setup. Um, I'll probably get hit for not having stuff for him to climb on. It is what it is. This is a basic sterile setup that I enjoy. He eats. He's stress-free. He drinks water. He sheds perfectly. We don't have any issues. No respiratory issues, anything like that. So I want to keep it that way. Um, review tank bad on humidity if you get a good substrate you can help you can put a uh, moss in there to kind of help a little bit spray down which brings me to another point spray bottles get you some spray bottles those are essential humidity you need to be able to read humidity thermostat you must have a thermostat going to your heat element if you do not have a thermostat on your heat element you will have a cooked snake or a possible fire on your hands. Don't be that person. Here's another very basic setup. This setup to me is perfect for young snakes, yearlings and below. Um, if you have quarantine, this is perfect. If for some reason you decide to buy an animal on an impulse, this is perfect. I don't suggest you buy reptiles or any animal on impulse. But if you do, you can go down to Walmart and buy this Rubbermaid bin with latches for honestly maybe $2.50. It costs $10 for a uh, pencil solder you make your air holes. I mean everyone has paper towels. This bowl is two dollars These are five dollars at most reptile expos and then of course Your young babies or your younger animals. This is perfect for younger animals perfect for your quarantine type setups This is not permanent Don't think this is a permanent setup. Can tubs work permanently? Yes, they can. Do people hate tub setups? Yes, they do Do tubs produce great heat variants? It depends on what you're using I use under tank heaters. I try to use a third or maybe a quarter coverage. Um, hot spots are normally 90, 92. 
move over. Ambient's normally low as 75 in here. Um, it should be a little higher, but it's hard in these tanks or these enclosures to get it dialed in perfectly. Same with the glass tanks. It's hard to get it dialed in perfectly. Do they work? Are they great for temporary setups? Yes. Permanent, in my opinion, no. But do your own research. Read, read, read. Look up every video you can and decide for yourself what is the best for your animals. But definitely take all advice that you can get. Um, same thing, you wanna have, hello ghost, this is my pet ghost. Um, you wanna have an under tank heater. You wanna have thermostats. I know these are reading high, I promise. I have a temperature gun, I, I might have to show you, but they do read on the high side what they need, around 90, 92, where their hides are. Um, some people like for you to have multiple hides. I don't have enough room. I prefer a larger water dish so they can soak if need be. That's me. I also, for my younger snakes, I prefer paper towel. Um, you can use newspaper and all that, but to me this is cleaner looking and I can see what's going on with my younger snakes or my quarantine snakes. I can see, oh, he's gone to the bathroom. I can see, I see you. I can see that, oh, he only urinated or he's got waxy, waxy urates or, oh my God, there's worms, you know, in his, in his feces or something like that. There's blood in his stool. I can see everything. He regurgitated. You can see everything with paper towels. That's why I quarantine young snakes. Paper towels are the way to go. Now you will hear people say they can eat the paper towels. Why are you feeding your snakes and not paying attention to them? I don't leave the room when my snakes are feeding. Watch your snakes. If you feed them and they grab the paper towel, don't be scared. They have the food in their mouth. Gently break the paper towel away. If they eat a little bit, it's not going to kill them. It might impact them, but be sure to get all of it out or as much as you can. It's the same thing with a, a substrate like the eco earth in here. You can get impactions. Try not to let that happen. You need to watch your animals when you feed them. Very basic setup. I prefer this. This is my second favorite method that I use. These are for my grow out tubs. These are for young animals. These are for quarantine animals. Bowl, hide, paper towel. The Velcro here is for my uh, humidity readout and therm thermometer if I want to use that. Um, here's Speaking of thermometer, you need a temp gun. You need to be able to dial in your thermostats. Like I said, I know my thermostats are reading in the hundreds, but realistically, if I were to shoot this while it was on, it's not on the rack, but while it was on the heat and I shot it under that hide, it would read 90 to 92 every time. I make sure. You should too. Okay, and these right here are my Animal Plastic T8s. Honestly, I wish I would have known about these before I bought any of this. Um, these have been great. They've All of these snakes grew up in these tubs. So they are, like I said, they're great for grow outs. They're great for if you're in a pinch, um, if you're that impulse buyer, which I hope you're not, but it does happen. Um, if I had known about this setup and, you know, everything I needed to know beforehand, I would have bought this, I would have saved myself all this money and I would have just bought this and been set up. My males could probably live in these their whole life. Females, I'll have to probably go up another size. But uh, yeah, I'm running this off of Herbstat 2s. This is a more high-end thermostat. This is a lot better than your little Amazon thermostats. These are great, they work. You have to pay attention to them. These are top of the line, as far as I'm concerned. Herbstat 2s, top of the line. Um, I have another humidity reader. It's a little low right now, but it's obviously not what's going to be in the cage. Um, this isn't completely necessary. I do this probably every three months. I do use some probiotics on my food. Not completely necessary. More paper towels. You have to have paper towels. You should have a log book. I log everything. Sheds, when they ate, what they ate, dates, bathroom breaks, all that good stuff. Keys. I have my little hook area for my keys. I also have a snake hook, but, uh, honestly, I use my snake hook for kind of raking my substrate and flatten it out more than I do actually hooking snakes. Spray bottles. Spray bottles are a necessity. Hand sanitizer. Necessity. You need to use hand sanitizer every time you touch the snake and before you swap over. Um, another spray bottle. Labels are perfect. You do not want to spray bleach water in your PVC enclosures. You will warp the colors. I use vinegar and I use Dawn dish soap and water to clean my cages. There are veterinary disinfectants that I'm looking into, but as of right now that is what I use. Some people use gloves. I don't personally. I use Germex hand sanitizer. Uh, Clorox wipes are great for the plastic tubs. Your knowledge. You should always have knowledge. You should always be reading. You should always be looking into better ways to do things. Um, but back to the cage. I have these water dishes. These water dishes are on Amazon for 20 bucks. They're great. Obviously, she loves soaking in them. This is Maganda. Taking a little dip. Hanging out. Um, LED lights, not necessary. Do they look cool? Yes, I like them. That was my touch. That was more for me. Um, Eco Earth in here as well. I, I have used Aspen. Um, I, I hated it. Um, Lilith. 
my larger girl actually got some snuck in her vent, and that was not fun trying to get it out. Um, I have a medium hide in here for her. Larger hides for the larger snakes. There's the rock. I'm gonna be girly with. I have a 80 watt heat panel. The heat panel, I upsized it. I went to an 80 watt. 80 watt, you don't have to put out as much electricity. As you can see the numbers on here, I'm not pushing 100% on a lot of these. I'm not draining as much electricity because I have a larger heat panel. A 40 watt, you'd be overworking it. Or it'd be constantly running to heat this box up. This is a T8, this is four foot. Um, I have my temperature probe down below. Um, now I have a daytime and nighttime setup on these, so you'll probably see 81, let's check the back, around 89, that's good, we want 90, uh, my nighttime temps are supposed to be around 88, um, let's see, over here in the back corner, 77, great, the temperature radiant in these enclosures with a heat panel, radiant heat panel, and your thermostat, probe down here with a temperature gun you can dial everything in honestly from the hot side to the low side I can have 10 degrees difference that is amazing what you can do in these boxes and these PVC enclosures versus these more basic setups do these work yes hey, there's my husky hello Vader do these work yes they work um, can you do better yes you can you can definitely do better you should be striving to do better every time with raising your animals um, like I said I wish I would have known about these setups to begin with. I would have just bought these and not worried about these. If you're in a pinch, you're at Petco, you got a hundred bucks, PetSmart, whatever, you can buy my first reptile kit. It's probably gonna look like this. It's probably gonna give you a light that is completely not necessary. It's probably gonna give you a thermostat just like that and a radiant or a, a under tank heater, and that's fine. But you need to do things such as get a better substrate, possibly close off the uh, the vent up top. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you need to have a temperature gun so you can set up your temps properly. You need to have something to read humidity to make those work the right way. This, same thing. These hold humidity amazing, as you can see the condensation in there. The snakes, I, I never have a problem with shedding. My Suriname, these are my Surinams. I actually keep my humidity higher. Um, so as you can see, the condensation, I keep it higher for them. Also, you need thermostats. You need under tank heaters for them. I love the ventilation. Um, of this wire metal shelf. You can get this at Walmart. 60 bucks. It's great. 15 to 20. 20 bucks for this thermostat. $3. Maybe maybe 50, 60 for this tank. I don't know. This uh, tank was actually given to me. That's why I'm using it. Eventually he will move. Um, all these accessories that you build up over time. If you're a single snake owner, I highly recommend spending the money. Throw out your $180, $200 on this cage. Your twenty dollars on your water bowl, your twenty dollars, fifteen bucks on your hides, your larger hides. Go ahead and spend your hundred fifty, two hundred bucks on your thermostats. It's worth it, especially if you're putting an expensive animal in there. You want them to thrive. You want them to do the best they can. You don't want them to just, you know, exist. Um, perfect for quarantine. Perfect for grow out. More permanent. What you should be striving for. These are all basic setups. Um, Great for sterilization with the tubs. Great to look at. Things you need. You must have Dermex. You must have water bottles to spray down. You need to have disinfectants. You need to constantly be cleaning your area. You need to take notes. Not necessary probiotics. I use them every so often. Um, you need thermostats. And yeah, that's, that's basically, it's really simple. It's very simple. It's just taking the time to set everything up and making sure you're dialed in on what you need to be dialed in on. You want to be between 60 to 70 percent humidity. You want 90 hot spot, 80, 88 on the hot side, to 75 lowest on your cool side. My ambient temperature is normally around 75. That's what you should be striving for. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but uh, I'll do what I can to help you in any way. All right, guys, thank you.